that's why OTT platforms are the are the new way uh, yeah. for yeah. authors to connect with their readers. I wanted a multi-layered narrative to mm. bring out the complexity of India. Where yeah. is the Indian Hercule Poirot or the Indian Miss Marple? Yeah. You know, we, yeah. we don't we don't have that. I mean. Hello, welcome Ambassador Swaroop to um, the weeks off the shelf. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have you there. You've worn many, very, many, many hats. And of course, we're now talking about a book which has been, uh, with, has been out, as you said, almost in 2008, Six Suspects. It's now a web show, trending really. Uh, so I really wanted to talk to you, uh, you know, we wanted to talk to you about your writing, your no longer going to, you know, you're still part of the foreign service, but retired. Uh, what's your new book? We're all very excited to talk about that. So welcome. Um, and I want, uh, so let's start off with Six Suspects, which has become, which is the trending this thing. Here. So you are, I'm sure has have watched it. Did it live up to the expectations of your book? Well, first of all, thank you, Mandira, for having me on the show. Uh, it's wonderful to reconnect with you. Uh, and yes, uh, Six Suspects has now transitioned from a book into a web series. Uh, you know, some books get made into a film. Uh, and some books get made into a film and a web series, and some books, books get made into books. a web series. Go to the so. <laughs> Look, I mean, I've written only three books. The first one was lucky to go to the Oscar and you know become this sensation called Slumdog Millionaire. Mm -hmm. And the second, as you have just said, has just come out on the fourth of February on Disney Hotstar as as a web series. And the third one, The Accidental Apprentice, has also been optioned by the same people who have done the web uh, series of six suspects yeah. uh, mm -hmm. so let's see what fate has in store for that one as well but yes it's an exciting time uh, to see something that you created what more than a decade ago yeah. now coming back uh, into people's consciousness through the medium of the web series because you know these days cinema going is almost uh, yeah. has stopped yeah. because yeah. of the concerns yeah. about you yeah. know catching uh, catching yeah. the virus yeah. etc yeah. and that's why ott platforms are the are the new way uh, yeah, for yeah. authors to connect with their readers, uh, you know, who get to watch the cinematic adaptation of their work. Mm. And I would say that, yes, uh, uh, I think they have done a fantastic job in the sense that they have remained very faithful to the book. Yeah. You know, when uh, Q&A transitioned to Slumdog Millionaire, yes. a lot of things were lost, uh, yes. most importantly being the name of my central exactly. character. Exactly. And I was going to talk to you about that. Because it was a one, it was, I mean, you know, that name, I mean, it is like, it is like, it, it has the same weight as an Amar Akbar Anthony. It is, it is, it speaks of in India of a different generation. It speaks, it speaks to so much. It has so much, uh, it's emblematic of, of who we are. Uh, so, you know, the dropping of the name um, Ram Muhammad Thomas was, was quite a big drop, right? I agree. Yeah, because you see, uh, one of the central lead motives of the book was the multidimensionality of Ram Muhammad Thomas, how yeah. he uses the various elements of his name to uh, react to different situations and yeah. deal with different situations. You know, for with an Australian diplomat, he becomes Thomas. Yeah. With a with a Hindu uh, actress, he becomes Ram. Um, for his friend uh, uh, Salim, he becomes yeah. Muhammad, of Muhammad. course. So yeah. you know that was the whole idea. And in a way, I wanted him to represent each and every street kid in India. Yeah. So with a name like Ram Muhammad Thomas, he is not particularized. He is not yes. North Indian or South exactly. Indian. He's not yeah. Hindu or yeah. Muslim or Sikh yeah. or Christian. Yeah. He's really emblematic of, uh, of an India that we are gradually losing, I would say. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, I think the multidimensionality of Ram Muhammad Thomas was completely lost when he became the unidimensional Jamal Malik yeah. in Slumdog Millionaire. Yeah. But then, you know, these are some of the compromises that uh, you have to you live with. Uh, yeah, when, yeah. When the and book, I mean, it was uh, Danny Boyle, it was the, yeah, it was the Oscars. But I want to, so let's talk about Six Suspects. Now, you wrote yes. Six Suspects and it came out in 2008. Um, it was even then, and you know, um, now it, seems almost impossible that a diplomat would have written a book which was based on like a Jessica Lal. I mean, you have almost this thing, it's inspiring, uh, in, you know, it inspires from real life. Um, you know, you it is a politician, it's about corruption, it's about, it's about so many things. Uh, so A, uh, you know, writing the book at that time and as, um, what was it like? And, you know, and the book sort of finding its feet in a different world uh, in a different time. Uh, do you think you could have written this, written this book, say, four years ago when you were still a diplomat now? 
Well, I wrote this book when I was a full-fledged diplomat and I still had plenty of years uh, before retirement. But first of all, let me clarify, this book is not about Jessica Lal at all, as you no, have read the not. book. Of course not. You know, the, the Jessica Lal case was just the peg, you know. In fact, yeah. I have combined Jessica Lal, I have combined the BMW case, I have yeah. combined the Black Bucks, you know, yeah. so many things. But that all that happens in the first 10 pages of the novel, yeah. just to create yeah. the yeah. backstory yeah. of Vicky Rai. Yeah, and yeah. the rest of the novel is really the backstories of these six suspects That's who are right, arrested yeah. with yeah. guns in their possession at the farmhouse where Vicky Rai gets shot. And because, you know, uh, the reason why I chose these six suspects was I wanted a multi-layered narrative to bring mm -hmm. out the complexity of India. Because, yeah. you know, India is such a complex country. True. And you get to see only that facet of India, you know, from which you are trained to see the world. Yeah. So, yeah. for instance, you know, uh, a high flying politician would see the world very differently from a mobile yeah. phone thief. Yeah. You know, one lives in a slum, one lives in a uh, yeah. Lutian's uh, bungalow and things like yeah. that. So I, I wanted to bring that element that, you know, uh, what you are seeing from the eyes of this person is a very different India mm -hmm. than what you would see from the eyes of a star, yeah. for instance. Mm -hmm. And that was the idea of creating these multiple narratives. Uh, it was a very tough book to write, to be honest, because... Uh, you know, Q&A was an easy book. There was a central character. Yeah. You were following his journey from beginning to end, and he was a lovable character. In Six Suspects, not a single character is purely lovable, so to yeah. speak, you know. Yeah, yeah. But Everybody has shades of gray. And yeah. most importantly, there is no center of gravity because, you know, yeah. every 30 pages, you are shifting perspective. Shifting you are going yeah. from a yeah. mild yeah. country yeah. 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 to a Bollywood yeah. actress, to a politician, mm. to a American, uh, you know, who comes to yeah. India in search yeah. of a yeah. or a bride. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then you go to a bureaucrat uh, who thinks he has been possessed by the spirit of yeah. Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah. And then finally, yeah. you get to see the world through the eyes of a of a Stone Age tribal, you know, yeah. who still hunts with bows and arrows. Yes. And yes. what happens when he comes to uh, modern India and sees the glittering lights of civilization? Yeah. Uh, what, yeah. what happens? What happens yeah. then? So that was the idea. Uh, when I wrote this novel, I really wanted to capture India of that particular time. Yeah. But as you said, uh, the book is almost timeless in the sense you read it very recently again, and yeah. you felt it could have been written even uh, last year. Yeah, I mean, I think the I think also what is wonderful, and this is what I wanted to get is that, you know, if you read, um, and if you look at contemporary fiction, you know, you look at what is uh, commercial fiction, um, you know, we've been able to do a lot of literary fiction and Indian, the Indian publishing industry is has a series of people who you can lame as literary fiction writers. But commercial fiction, we've always struggled to create that kind of pace. And your books are extremely well paced. You know, they have the, you know, they have, they're almost like uh, film cinematic scripts where, you know, there is a certain pace that somebody who's grown up in Hindi with, you know, with the wonder and the joy of Hindi cinema. It's somebody who's an observer, who's an observer. There's this, this thing. I mean, you know, I was just looking at it and looking at some of the stuff that you wrote. I mean, you have the when you have uh, you know the uh, investigative journalist and he says uh, murder um, you know uh, 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 truth is messier right uh, I think it's like the beginning which is which is a great line you know you have wonderful you know like the market art dialogues which are sort of uh, well thing. so how did you uh, you know it's almost there I mean you've got the script you've got the punch so uh, growing up did you what it was it did you always know how you were going to write. Um, did, was it a lot of Hindi uh, cinema? Could you have become a script writer instead of becoming a diplomat? Well, lots of questions there. Yes, uh, in that, one, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, but first of all, I grew up uh, in a normal family in Allahabad, in a family yeah. of lawyers, in fact, and, and trained actually to become a civil servant. It was decided at a very early age that I was not fit for engineering. I was not fit for medicine. So, uh, and I didn't want to become a lawyer like the rest of my family because yeah. my mother had explicitly forbidden that yeah. none of my sons should have enough lawyers in the family already. So then it was already decided that I would be a civil servant. Mm. So I really trained to be a civil servant and I was a writer, I was a reader, yeah. you know, that yeah. was the most important thing because, mm. you know, one of the advantages, Mandira, of growing up in a pre-internet, pre-cable TV era mm. is that you could only, the only pastimes you had was you could play some sports, uh, you could watch mm. a movie once a week, and you could mm. read books, you know, there was yeah. really, uh, there was no play, PlayStation, um, uh, and there was no yeah, there was uh, Instagram yeah. and, and things like that to, yeah. to keep you occupied otherwise. So I read a lot. And I think it was that early training as a reader that mm. helped me to make the transition into being a writer. Mm. 
Hmm. Because if I had not read as much as I did, yeah. uh, then uh, I would have struggled uh, because then I would not have had the vocabulary uh, of, uh, you know, of yeah. what it is uh, yeah. to be to be a writer. And yes, uh, Hindi films were certainly a huge, huge uh, inspiration. Hmm. Uh, they were uh, certainly something which uh, I imbibed uh, through all the films that I used to watch. Uh, you know, yeah. we used to we were a family that used to go and watch movies at least twice or thrice a month you know so okay. the latest releases we would go to the cinema yeah. hall and actually yeah, watch it as part of a com yeah. communal experience yeah. and yes and many of these films stayed with me because you know i especially enjoyed those films where the pace did not slack at all you know True. where uh, you know one after the other i mean shole is a prime example you could yeah. watch that entire 3 hour movie without getting bored for a single mm -hmm. second you know, it was one of those, uh, it was one of those films. And when I was writing my novel, I wanted to create, you know, that kind of pace. Yeah. So it was one, uh, you know, uh, having a cinematic kind of a feeling where yeah. uh, you can visualize the page, mm -hmm. uh, the action on the page happening on mm -hmm. the screen. And secondly, my early reading of thrillers, I think that uh, impelled me to uh, write in a thrilling kind of way where yeah. You, you get a hook for the reader to sort of get his or her mm. teeth into. Mm. And then that hook sort of impels the reader to find out what's happening next because, you know, now the reader is curious. I mean, in the in the first book, it was very obvious. How yeah. the hell does Ram Homer Thomas answer the questions exactly. that, uh, yeah. that, that, that yeah. he answered? And in the second book, once again, you know, there are these six different characters, but they are all part of a murder investigation. Yeah. So that, and, and as you have uh, read in the book, the... Chapters in the book are also marked after the stages of a murder investigation. Yeah, yeah. So you open with the murder, the fact of the murder, yeah. then you have the suspects, then yeah. you have their motives, yeah. then you have the evidence, yeah. then you have the, uh, you know, the yeah. solution, and then yeah. you have a confession. Yeah. So that was the idea to create uh, a, a murder mystery packed around the uh, you know the police procedure of uh, how exactly. a, uh, yeah yeah which is, how a, how a murder is solved yeah which is which is interesting because you know if you look at crime and you know you, you you look at in some ways this is sort of all of true crime with a lot of masala in this thing it is it's you know we don't india has never really been able to do a really juicy crime novel you know we um which is very odd because we are surrounded by crime it's not as if you know we're a crime free country but, you know look at this the Nordic crimes, they think, for example, they're crime free and they managed to do uh, the bloodiest murders. You see. But, you know, we haven't really been able to do that. But, you know, you've, you do this remarkably. But also, um, so, you know, you talked about growing up in Allahabad. And in, in the web series, of course, has been made by Tikmanchu Dulia, who also grew up in UP. So, a lot in Allahabad. Yes. In Allahabad. So, did you, did, were you involved with the, did you see, were you on, uh, on, uh, on uh, set? Did you, did you contribute to the um, script? Uh, did you choose? No, first of all, us? you know, uh, because the Gbancho was doing it, I mean, first of all, Preeti Sinha, the producer, you know, who mm -hmm. first approached me for the rights uh, to yeah. the book, uh, uh, as I mentioned in an interview uh, with her, that uh, the rights were actually originally with a British company. I know. Uh, I we know. kept them for about six years. Then they went to a Chinese company. But Preeti had been chasing me since 2017. And she was very, very keen. She said, I love this book. I absolutely want to do this. So first, she had only just the Hindi rights. But yeah. then eventually she got the global rights because, you know, I, I realized that, you know, when someone is at, as passionate about the book as she is, then she deserves to get mm. the whole package, uh, so mm. to speak. And then Tigmanchu, when he came onto the scene uh, and he was hired as the, as the director, then my comfort level was very high because mm. first of all, Tigmanchu also being from Allahabad, he was able to get the milieu of the novel exactly. straight away. Exactly, which is very, which you is know, very in the web series, In the web series, it is set in Chhattisgarh, but in the mm. novel, it is actually yeah. a very much a UP, a UP yeah. book. Yeah, yeah. And, and Tigmanchu and me, both being from UP, I think, uh, I think he got the book, so yeah. to speak. And it was very clear from the beginning that they would be quite faithful to the book. Of course, uh, they would have to take some liberties because uh, the, uh, you know, the requirements of a web series are very different yeah. Yeah. from that of a book. And you have to, and because, as I said, there was no center of gravity, you had to create a center of gravity through the medium of these two yeah. new characters that were introduced. Yeah. Sudha Bhardwaj yeah. and, uh, and Suraj yeah. Yadav, uh, yeah. played by Richa Chadha yeah. and uh, yeah. Prateek Gandhi, respectively. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think uh, you know, the fact that Tigmanchu did it uh, meant that, uh, you know, uh, he would he would be very faithful to the original source material. Yeah, yeah. So you also talk about, you know, the you talk about the tribal, right? For example, in, I remember in an interview, you said that he is probably, 
if you're probably your fav favorite character, because you talk about the fact that, and I think at that point of time, you say that he is, you know, the idea that uh, the Andaman, you know, that they look at medicine and they look at everything and they look at holistic. And if you look at it in some ways, exactly that, you know, you've sort of, we've sort of been, this is the big idea now. Uh, so I really wanted to talk to you about uh, that. I mean, in the sense that how you look at how everything used to trigger, um, you know, writing about that. Um, and, um, you know, this idea of, in your books, of, uh, you know, you talk about the narrative of India, you know, different milieu, the multi-layered aspect of India, which is really central. It's like a Bollywood as this thing. So, you know, the love affair of in, with India in some ways. Um, can you talk about that? You know, being a diplomat and how that is at the center of what your job yeah. was and also your weekend reading. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, I wanted a multi-dimensional narrative. Yeah. But I, you know, of the six characters, I wanted some insiders and I wanted a few outsiders as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because I thought that would also be an interesting thing that you know, mm -hmm. within India, how do people look at India, and how do an outs how do outsiders look at India? You know, when yeah. they come into India, uh, what what are their perceptions? So creating Larry Page, uh, you know, uh, based mm -hmm. on the uh, same name as that of the Google founder, was of course yeah. uh, pretty easy. Uh, you know, he's yeah. a simpleton. Uh, yeah. uh, a forklift operator in Waco, yeah. Texas, uh, in a yeah. Walmart there, he yeah. comes to India in search of a mail order bride and then yeah. the, you know, trials and tribulations he has to go through yeah. here. That was interesting. But then, you know, I wrote this book in 2008 and don't forget in 2004, five, we had that big tsunami. Big tsunami, yeah. And, yeah. yeah and, the, and the tsunami impacted the Andamans in a very big yeah. way. Mm -hmm. And that's when, you know, the first time the tribe, the six tribes living in Andaman first came into my consciousness. Yeah. Because I read about, you know, how these tribesmen were able to sense that the big wave is coming, that the tsunami is coming and they all went to higher ground. So not a single tribesman lost their lives because, mm. you know, uh, I think they are somehow, their antenna is more attuned to natural uh, mm. calamities or, I mean, they are much more in sync with nature. Mm. So they are, they have an early warning system that you and I don't have. Yeah. And because of that, they were able to reach higher ground. And then I read about the sentinelies. Yeah. This is just, I think there are less than 50 sentinelies left now yeah. in the world. Yeah. And they are in the Sentinel Island and they repel foreigners, anybody who approaches them even by boat or, yeah. or a dinghy or whatever, they shoot bows and arrows and, and, and send them away. And I thought it would be just fascinating to have someone from the Andaman Islands hmm. just come to India. And then, you know, it was, it was a difficult character for me to create because hmm. with Larry Page, okay, he's an American, but at the end yeah. of the day, you know, he eats the same food that I eat, you know, yeah. uh, he wears the same clothes uh, that I do. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, he's also traveled in a plane and a bus in a, in a, hmm. uh, in a, in a rickshaw, but somebody from the Andaman has never seen a train in his life. Yeah. Yeah. So how would that person relate to this? But mm -hmm. more than that, I wanted Akethi to really represent the conscience of the book. Because yeah. as I said, every character, you know, yeah. is morally yeah. dubious. Yeah. There are shades of gray. But Akethi is a pure character in the sense that, you know, where yeah. he comes from, you know, things like crime do not exist. You yeah. know, nobody yeah. steals anybody else's uh, stuff there. Uh, yeah. People live in harmony with nature and in harmony with themselves. So I wanted him to come to India. And then I wanted him to look us in the eye mm -hmm. and say that you call me a tribal and uncivilized, but am I uncivilized or are you uncivilized? Yeah. You know, yeah, that yeah. was, that was, that was really the big picture. So when is the next book? Um, and um, are you writing it now? I mean, you used to be a weekend writer, right? Yeah. I used to be a weekend writer, but don't forget my last book came out in 2013. So it's yeah. been what, eight years now, Yes, uh, very long. eight books. and a half. And, and the reason is, uh, you know, all three of the books were written when I was posted abroad. Yeah. So the first book was written in two and a half months when I was posted in London. Mm. The second book was written in one and a half years when I was posted in South Africa, again, yeah. you know, working on weekends. Yeah. And the last book came out uh, when I was consul general in Osaka, Kobe, Japan, yeah. again, took a year and a half. Then after that, I, 2013, I finished my tenure in uh, Osaka and I returned to India. And in India, as you know, very yes. soon after arrival, I became the official spokesperson. Exactly. And that was a job where you had absolutely no chance of even yeah. thinking about a book, let alone yes. writing it. So then when they, uh, you know, when they were posting me abroad, I chose Canada because I thought, you know, Canadians yeah. would be like Americans, uh, you know, Americans work very hard Monday to Friday, but Saturday and Sunday are sacrosanct and I'll get my weekends free. And 
in all my postings, I got my weekends free. But then I forgot that this time I was not going as an ordinary diplomatic officer. I was going as the ambassador, as the high commissioner. Yeah. And then I realized that for the high commissioner, there is no weekend off. <laughs> because every weekend I was doing, you know, I, the, the Indian community was uh, calling me over for either an Onam yeah. or a Ongal or an Eid or a Tej or a Holi or a Diwali, you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And in Canada, let me tell you, in India, Diwali is a two-day affair. You have Choti Diwali and you have Badi Diwali. Yeah. In Canada, Diwali is a 45-day affair because the first Indian association does the Diwali about four weeks before Diwali. And then the last Indian association does the Diwali about two weeks after Diwali is ended. And, oh and the High Commission has to go to each and every one of them. So, so because of, of that, yeah, I got no time at all to, to write even on weekends. Okay. And that's really the only reason why I have not been able to, uh, to create a new book. For, for all these years. But now that I have retired, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, now I will get cracking and, and finally and finally do that book that, that has been sort of jostling around in my head for quite Is some it? time. Because, I mean, I remember yes. you talked about that, you know, you said after Sambhav Middle and Air, it was such a big book that the second book was a little bit, you know, there was always this feeling of whether you could create it or not. You know, there was writer's block. Um, and, you know, I mean, diplomats write. It's not as if diplomats don't. Um, and um, so, um, you know, is there a writer's block for fiction? Uh, could you, I mean, do you think that that, do you th I mean, because you have. No, first of all, Mandira, let me correct you. I never had writer's block. I never said I had writer's block. In fact, what happened was I had so many stories, uh, you know, sort of jostling inside jostling. my head. You don't know which one. And there were six of them. And that's why I created six suspects, six suspects because I could okay. not decide whether to okay. do. And, that, you know. One of the critics has actually said this, that, you know, actually there are six novels, uh, you know, Put inside one, together, yeah. Yeah. each one of them. I mean, Mohan Kumar's uh, trajectory could have been one yeah. novel. One novel yeah. the, what happens to the actress could be, could have been another novel. Larry Page could have been a third novel, oh, you know, yeah. that kind of a thing. But because, as I said, I wanted to create a, a multidimensional narrative. And most importantly, I wanted to test my own boundaries as a writer. Hmm. When I was writing Six Exceptions, I knew from day one that this will not be as successful as Q&A, as simple as that. Because, as I said, Q and A was a safe book. This was, uh, you know, this was a subversive book in, yeah. in, in a sense uh, because yeah. you are challenging the reader constantly yeah. and and yeah. asking the reader that have the faith there will be a payoff in the end. Yeah. But you know, some yeah. readers may say, "Look, I just cannot, uh, I yeah. just cannot comprehend six different voices. You know, six yeah. different perspectives. It's too much for me." Hmm. But I knew that. But I said, "I want to challenge myself as a as a writer and see, hmm. you know, can I do a multi dimensional narrative? Can I uh, can I write with?" you know, shifting tone and voice and character, mm. uh, you know, every mm. 30 pages or not. So, no, so you, so now, I mean, are there lots of books and lots of, uh, start this thing, is it going to be another? No, see, that, for me, that, this is the hardest part, deciding what to do next, because again, you have four or five different uh, plot ideas in your head mm. and you have to constantly test it against yourself, you know, will this work or that one work, you know, that kind of a thing. And there are some writers who are able to write. I mean, James Patterson says he writes four novels at the same time. I don't I know. know how he does it. I, I, he works I with can't. collaborators. Yeah, of course. Now all his books are James Patterson and so and, and so. You know, James yeah. Patterson yeah. would be and like in he's written with 14, huh, 14 with font and the collaborator would be in like six font, you know. No, no, but he's written with Clinton. Yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah, So exactly. that, in which case, and his is a smaller point and... Uh, Clinton's is really yeah. large. Yes, because because Clinton is a bigger Clinton name than even James Patterson. Yeah. You know. So do you yeah. so so do you read a lot of crime? Have you read, for example, the new Hillary Clinton uh, crime book, which is one again very pacey? You should. Hillary Clinton's crime book. Yes, she's written one with Louis Penny. Oh no, I have. I, I, no, I'm that sorry, is I that is that is like a. It is a it's a masala book about the world saved by women. Okay, it is it's okay. it's, 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 it's wonderful. It really is. It's a okay. Now that different. you have mentioned it to me, I will certainly. Uh, but, I will certainly uh, look it up. Yeah. So, no, I've read I've read a lot of crime fiction. Uh, I mean, growing up, I read all the crime fiction. You know, I read yeah. Agatha Christie, of course, each and every one of them. All the entire Sherlock Holmes. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, Arthur Conan Doyle's entire uh, entire body of work uh, I had read. And then, of course, uh, the modern uh, mystery writers as well, you know, yeah. whether it is John Grisham or whatever. You know, I have read them all. Yeah. And, but, you know, as you rightly said, where is the Indian idiom in crime writing? You know, where yeah. is the Indian Hercule Poirot or the Indian Miss Marple? Yeah. You know, we, we, yeah. don't, we don't have that. I mean, yeah. there are many writers who have tried uh, their hand at crime fiction, but nobody has really come out with a consistent body of work uh, where, you know, you could live with one character. 
I, I personally am not a fan of that. I don't want to be limited by one character. I know it's a very safe thing. You know, create a character, create a Harry Potter, then do all your books with Harry Potter. You don't have to, you know, all the quirks of this character. Yeah. You don't have to do anything again. But I would feel imprisoned on almost, you know, that to do a you, series. You know, yeah, yeah, that this character is great. just now taking over my life and I cannot think beyond beyond this character. And that's why I think eventually even J.K. Rowling got tired of her uh, of, of her character and, and, and then started writing crime crime fiction. True, because I mean, they say crime is where, you know, it's really the at the heart of trying to look at the world through what is one crime. So I want to talk to you now, you're on the other side, you know, in the sense, while here you're on the other side and you're being questioned, you're being interviewed. But you have now chosen post-retirement to be in our shoes in some ways, trying to get diplomats to talk, which is impossible. So how has yes. that been like? Well, it's been very interesting. Uh, first of all, it allows me to engage with a totally new medium. You know, now I'm a television host uh, and I have a weekly show. You know, weekly show itself is a challenge because one week ends and immediately you have to start thinking about the second week. Uh, yeah. You know, if it was once a month, if it was a monthly show, you can do your thing and then you can do other things and then yeah. you can, you know, yeah. uh, three days a week, you can do your uh, monthly show. But yeah. because it's a weekly show, it's almost like a treadmill that you are now constantly running on. Yeah. You, you yeah. Know, there's, there's, no, there's no exit, so to speak. But yeah. I like the challenge. First of all, as I said, it's a new medium. I'm still learning the language, the idioms of this, uh, of the, of this medium. And secondly, it allows me to remain in touch with my, you know, with my first or second love, whichever one as you may <laughs> wish to uh, think of it as diplomacy, you know, yeah. uh, what is happening in the world? How is India adjusting to global changing geopolitical realities? And most importantly, I think it allows me to have really informed conversations with a range of experts. You know, that is the USP of the show. A diplomatic Dispatch, it is called. It's on Sunset Television. And every week, the idea is to have an in-depth discussion on a topic of current relevance with yeah. at least a couple of international experts on that yeah. particular subject. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so that's, uh, so, that's, uh, uh, so that's what I enjoy. But let's see, you know, because if I keep doing that show, then certainly I will not be able to write also. But now got so much this thing i mean we, we've been weekend to now the whole day practically what is i mean it's it's do you only are you a are you a writer who only writes at night is it pressure you think you think that it is um no there is no pressure because see the pressure as you have yourself said is basically for the second book you know the second book syndrome yeah, yeah. once the second book is out and then the third book also came out so there's there is no pressure as such it's just that you know, I have to, I'm a very finicky writer, you know, I'm not that type of a writer, you know, who can just, I have met so many writers now who say, somebody says, you know, I write when I get 10 minutes off anywhere, I'm traveling in the car, I start yeah. writing and jotting down. I cannot do that at all. I can only write when I have a consistent, at least four or five hours of block time, where I'm not disturbed at all, my phone is not ringing, I have shut the door, you know, and I'm just uh, concentrating on the book. Mm -hmm. And that is why, as I said, I was a weekend writer, because it was only on weekends, that I could get that uh, concentrated period of time where, uh, you know, I, I could, uh, I could uh, let the idea germinate in my head and then start writing, uh, start writing from the top of my head. So I'm st still looking. I mean, technically, you, you're right. Technically, I am now free. I have the whole day. But, you know, I have just shifted houses. Uh, things are still a bit unsettled. So I'm just waiting for, you know, this unsettled period to be over. And once I get into a rhythm, into a groove, then I think I'll, st I'll start writing. Perfect. So we wait, and I'm sure it's going to be a blockbuster. Thank you so much for, for being the part of the show. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mandira. It was a real pleasure.